NASA's Aquarius mission will cast a specialized eye on the world's interconnected ocean basins and seas to give scientists an unprecedented survey of sea surface salinity. By operating for three years, the international mission is also designed to show how salinity, or salt content, changes over time. The mission could prove essential to deciphering the future of climate change on Earth. So by having salinity information from space, we'll provide this missing link to understand how ocean impact the climate change. The supply of fresh water is important for everybody, okay? Variations in the global water cycle on a large scale mean changes in climate from wet to dry, from moist years, rainy years, to dry seasons and to droughts. They affect agriculture, they affect water supply for our water systems, for, for all the uses that we have, agriculture and everything else. So to understand climate change in the future, it's really important to understand what global warming, for example, is going to do to those rainfall patterns and drought patterns. A Delta II rocket stands ready on California's west coast to launch this spacecraft on a three-year mission to decipher what the dissolved salts in the world's ocean mean to our current climate and the future of the planet. At launch, the spacecraft will head to what's called a polar orbit. It will fly some 480 miles above Earth, crossing over the planet's north and south poles with each orbit. From that vantage point, the Aquarius instrument will get a chance to see each part of the world's ocean and assemble a complete map of sea surface salt content. It is uh, going to be looking at sea salinity, so what you're doing is you're trying to get uh, widespread um, coverages of the whole Earth um, a little bit at a time. You're, you're doing swaths around the Earth, and so um, what they're trying to do is map the salinity. So to get an overall map of the, of the world's oceans, uh, you need this type of launch. You can't do it from an equatorial type or uh, from a geo type orbit. We really need to understand the dynamics of this to really understand how changes in droughts and rainfall are going to affect our society on the land where we live, because it's all driven by what's happening over the ocean. NASA's Launch Services Program, based at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, is managing the Aquarius SAC-D launch. Traveling from their home base, the launch team is responsible for the rocket's preparation and readiness to fly and making sure the spacecraft and rocket work well together during ascent. LSP, as the program is called, will conduct the countdown and follow the spacecraft's climb into orbit. The Delta II rocket has earned a reputation for dependable operation and has been a common sight for decades, roaring off launch pads in Florida and California. The Delta has been one of the, our most uh, reliable vehicles uh, by far. We have not had a single mishap or, or failure on the Delta II in, in the LSB's uh, history. So it, there have been failures. Uh, some of the other guys have experienced failures on that vehicle um, years ago, uh, but the uh, vehicle is uh, robust. NASA is not the only player in the Aquarius SAC-D mission. While NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory and Goddard Space Flight Center worked on the main instrument, Aquarius, the spacecraft itself came from the Argentinian Space Agency, known as CONAI. Other instruments and elements were contributed from several countries, including France, Canada, Italy, and Brazil. On an international mission, you have those. Uh, the challenge is that you have to work them under an environment where there is significant language, cultural, and geographical differences. And that increases the level of effort that it's required to get the issues resolved. In most of these missions that are looking down at the earth and studying uh, um, the oceans and so forth, uh, NOAA missions example, uh, there's a lot of uh, cooperative uh, instruments on board from other countries, so, and that data is shared readily uh, between the countries. NASA and Argentina have collaborated in the past on several missions, experience that is being applied to this flight as well. Well, this is actually the fourth time that uh, NASA and uh, CONAI partnered on, on a NASA, on a science mission. Um, I've had the opportunity to work on the prior mission, which launched on a Delta II, and uh, I truly enjoyed uh, the experience of working with the Argentinians. 
So there's an element of discovery here. There, there, I can't tell you what we're going to find because we don't know what's out there yet.